Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today we're going to make this cute little starfish washcloth. It was a request from one of the viewers that wanted a beachy type washcloth, so this is what I came up with. Um, the pattern download link is right below, so you can click on that to download the pattern, and we'll get started right now. Okay, so to make our starfish washcloth, what we're going to be, or what I'm going to be using, is a Knit Picks dishy, which is 100% cotton, so you can also um, substitute with any 100% cotton. And I'm using Clementine is the name of the color. The color number is 25403. And to um, the hook I'm going to be using with this yarn is a 5mm USH hook. And um, this is a nice, easy care yarn that you can wash and dry, so that's why you usually want to choose a cotton for a washcloth. Get started, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Make sure you have a nice long tail for weaving in. You're going to be using this a lot with water, so you want a nice, um, good weave in at the end so it doesn't pop out. Um, the beginning instructions tell me to chain four. And I'm going to join that with a slip stitch at the beginning of the first chain. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't really care where I'm joining in that first chain because my first round of actual instructions is going to cover the entire chain so it doesn't have to be pretty. Just put it through any loop that you like and slip stitch it to finish off the round. And you'll see it's kind of a um, muddled mess here. If we just pull on it, we'll find that center hole that we're going to work into right below. So my very first instructions are chain three, which is going to count as double crochet. And then we're going to do 14 double crochets into our center ring. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to find that center hole again and put my hook through. And then yarn over and pull up that loop. You'll see it's more of like a layover. You're not really yarning over. Finish off my double crochet. So let me show you that layover again. Yarn over, put through the center. And I'm just kind of laying over the top of my hook. So if you're a beginner, you're not actually wrapping it around or anything. You just lay it over and turn your hook to grab it. And pull it through the center. Then I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through the first two loops. And yarn over and pull through the second two. I'm going to keep on doing that. I'm going to leave my tail out. Sometimes you can crochet it into the beginning ring, but I'm going to leave it out and just let it fall behind so that I can weave it in easier at the end. So there's another double crochet. I'm going to do 14 of these, so I'm going to have 15 all together because I'm counting that chain 3 as my very first double crochet. I'm on my last double crochet and you can see that my center ring is completely covered now. If you have trouble counting the post when it's in a tight circle like this, remember you can turn your work and just count your V's. So the stitches that look like V's, count how many you have, make sure you have 14 V's and then this chain 3 which doesn't really, it looks like a little bit of a V but it's a little bit more muddled. Um, to get your 15 for your first round. After you get your 15th, you're going to join with a slip stitch at the top of your chain three. So I usually grab two loops when I join. And the reason being, let me grab just one first so you can see if you've never seen my tutorials before. If I grab one and I do a slip stitch, it pulls on all the other chains that I've made and it creates this big hole that my join um, will have. If I grab two loops, which kind of pull it back into shape, if I grab that back loop in the bottom bump of my foundation chain that I made, that's the bottom bump right there. You can see on each chain there's a little dash for the bottom bump. I grab both of those loops, and I have two loops twisted on here, and I join with a slip stitch that hole is a lot less noticeable. It doesn't pull on the rest of the chains and it's more in line with the rest of my stitches. So now we're going to move on to our round two instructions. So the first thing we're going to do is chain three and that counts as a double crochet. 
And then we're going to double crochet back into that same stitch. So that little hole that we have, we're going to sing, I'm sorry, double crochet right into it. And that's going to create an increase. And then after that, we're going to start making our star points. So our next stitch is going to be into our next one. And the next one after the join always looks a little strange and small. So you got to make sure you get in there and get under both loops. So I'm going to double crochet in there, if I can get in there. There we go. And then I'm going to chain two to start making the first point of my starfish. And double crochet back into that same stitch. And that's going to start to form a point for our fish. This is also the beginning of our pattern repeat, so our DC, chain 2 DC in one stitch. Then we're going to do two double crochets in the next stitch and the next stitch. So we're going to do two increases in our next two stitches. So I do two double crochets in that stitch, and then two double crochets in the next stitch. And you'll see how I grab my stitches when I pull through my um, loops. That's just a habit of mine. It keeps my loops kind of the same size and keeps them from pulling out when I'm pulling through. That's just something that I always do. So if you want to keep, um, especially with like slippery yarn, like cotton yarn, it'll help keep your loops the same size so that you're not having stitches that are pulling out very easily. So when you have slippery yarn, if you grab onto your stitches, as you pull through, it will help them stay the same size. So now um, I'm going to do my repeat again. So I'm going to do my next point. So I'm going to double crochet once in the next stitch. And then I'm going to chain two and double crochet right back into that stitch. And then I'm going to do my increases again. So I'm going to do that um, for three more points. So I can have my five-pointed star, and then we'll finish off um, the last few stitches at the end of the round. I've finished my four repeats, so now I just have my last two stitches, and in the second to last stitch I need to make my fifth point of my star. So I double crochet and chain two and double crochet all in that stitch. And then you'll remember at the very beginning of our round, we did two double crochets in one stitch. So we need to do our other two double because in between each point, we have four double crochets. So right now I only have two double crochets in between these two points. So I need to do two in this last stitch so that I'm even all the way around. And then after I finish those two double crochets, I'm going to go ahead and join with the slip stitch again, right at the top of my chain three. Okay, so we've got round two done. Now we have a semi star shape. It's more like a pentagon, um, but we're gonna start with round three. And my very first um, instructions are to slip stitch into my next stitch. So that kind of short looking double crochet, I wanna slip stitch there. And this is just to keep my pattern easier and I'll explain that more when we get all the way around. You'll see why that's um, an important stitch to make. So we'll slip stitch and start round three. So to begin after our slip stitch, we're going to chain three for our very first double crochet. That's going to count as our stitch that is above this double crochet. And now we're going to double crochet into our next stitch. And once I start working around, you're going to see the pattern that's developing to create more of a star look to this um, pattern. Now we're going to create our corner, or one of our points. And we're going to do that by doing three double crochets first around the chain. We don't work into the chain, we always go around the chain. Because we have more stitches than we have chains to put in here. So I'm going to do three around. And then I'm going to chain two again for a new point. And then I'm going to do another three inside. 
And this is going to give us a lot more defined point here. And to work around, you just, you're simply putting your hook all the way through the center and grabbing it and pulling it up. And I like to keep it close to my chain. And that keeps all my stitches nice and consistent. Now I'm going to do a double crochet in my next two stitches. But if you notice, this stitch right here is my next one. And it's a little hard to see the actual um, loops that I'm supposed to go under. And that's because I have so many stitches on my chain that it's blocking it. So make sure you pull those stitches over until you can see those two loops that you need to work under. That way you're not skipping it and working straight into that next stitch. You've got to work into this first stitch. Make sure you catch both loops. And I'm going to do a double crochet there. And then a double crochet into my next stitch. And now we're really going to start getting a star shape because we're going to skip these next two stitches. These next two double crochets are not going to be worked into. I'm going to do a double crochet in the third stitch here. And that's going to bring the points together and create more of a star shape. Double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to do our corner again. So we're going to repeat this pattern of doing three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets into our corner, and then we're going to work that same two double crochet, skip two, two double crochet. We're going to do that all the way around so we can make our five points of our star. I just did my last point and I'm doing my two double crochets before I skip my two stitches. And you'll see that because I did that slip stitch, <clears throat> because I did that slip stitch, I have two stitches to skip. If I hadn't have done that slip stitch into my next stitch, I would have only had one. So now I'm going to join right at the top of my chain three to join my round with a slip stitch. So to begin, we're going to slip stitch because we need to free up that stitch that we're going to be skipping at the very end. Then we're going to chain three to be our first double crochet. And now we're going to do three more double crochets, one in each stitch that we come to till we get to that point. And that gives us a nice dense washcloth. We have four double crochets, technically, between each of our skipped double crochets. So again, we're going to do three in the corner. It's not really a corner since it's a star, but I always tend to call it that. We're going to chain two, and then three more in that same space. And then we remember to pull our stitches over so that we can get into that first double crochet that we come to. And we're going to do four stitches. So one, two, three, and then four. And then we have our two middle double crochets from the round below. That's creating our um, divot in between our points, and we got to keep that. So we're going to skip those two and do our next four stitches of double crochet. And it's going to create a little kind of hole all the way up. So we're going to keep doing this pattern all the way around again of double crochets skipping those middle two and creating our points with the three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So keep working around this round and then we'll come back for our round five, right? One, two, three, four, yep, we're on round four, so we'll come back for round five. Okay, we're just finishing up the last side of our star for round four. 
with my four double crochets on the side. And then I have those last two that I have to skip, so I just join the top of my chain three with that slip stitch, and that creates the little pocket that we have on each side. So now my little cute starfish washcloth is getting even cuter. And I'm going to work on row five, or round five. And you can probably guess what our stitch pattern is going to be. We're going to chain, or first, I always forget that slip stitch. Got to remember the slip stitch first. And then we're going to chain three. And now we're going to have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five double crochets, so six all together with that chain three. So we're going to have six double crochets on each of these sides of our points. And then our double crochet three times, chain two, double crochet three times, once again. So it's the same pattern, we're just adding a couple of extra double crochets to each side of our point. So we're going to work this whole round the same similar way except we're doing six on each side instead of four like the last round so each round increases by two three in here probably very used to pushing your stitches aside to get into that first stitch after the point so I shouldn't have to keep bothering you with it but even I forget sometimes and want to just keep working so quickly that I skip that stitch altogether so I have to consciously remind myself to move it over and get that stitch so let's keep working around remember you're going to do six and then skip two double crochets to make our little hole in the middle. And then we'll meet up right near the end, like we did on the last round. And then we'll only have one more round to go. And also what you can do is if you don't want it as big as the one that I made, you can stop after this round and go straight to the last round instructions. Or if you want to make it even bigger, it's the same pattern. You're just going to keep filling in double crochets and skipping those two in the middle and doing your three chain two three in each point. So you can make this as small or as big as you want. So let's keep going on round five and I'll meet you right at the end of it. I'm almost done with my round five. And then we're just going to have one more round of double crochet before we finish. Yay! And then we'll do our finishing round, which is round seven, and you will be ready to wash. So I'm going to join my star with a slip stitch at the top. So you can see I have a cute, cute star going on. And I like my washcloths nice and big, so I'm doing one more round. And of course, it's going to be the same stitch pattern. Chain three. Now this time we're going to have seven double crochets. Eight total with that chain three on each side of our point. And we're going to do the three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in our corner. And we're going to skip those two middle double crochets just like every other round. And we're going to work all the way around again. And then we will we'll finish off with our round seven. That's going to include our little hang, um, hanging loop for our washcloth. So that's optional and I'll show you um, what you're going to do if you don't want that. So go ahead and keep on working on round six. And I'll meet you right when we join up. Alright, we are right at the very end of round six and we're ready to join up and do our finishing round seven. So round seven is totally optional. If you like the way that your washcloth looks now, you can just leave it as is. But the last round is going to kind of give um, just a nice edging and also a hanging loop. So if you want to be able to hang your washcloth, this is going to be the round for you. So we don't need to slip stitch. 
actually I'm sorry we do need to slip stitch because we are still skipping um, stitches at the very end so we slip stitch our very first stitch and then we're going to chain one because this is going to be a round of single crochets so we're going to single crochet into that same stitch that we slip stitched we're not counting the chain one as a single crochet and then we're going to just single crochet in every stitch that we come to so instead of double crocheting we're just single crocheting and this is going to give us a nice edge it'll kind of help our washcloth um, lay a little flatter when we come to our points I'm going to do a regular corner on this point and I'm going to do the hanging loop on the next one that way if you don't want the hanging loop you'll already know what to do so for the corners or the points we're going to do three single crochets around the chain and that's going to just round off our point and then remember pull those stitches over and get in that first double crochet and we're still going to skip those two middle stitches in between our points we still want to keep that little um, hole going that we have in between each point so once you get to those two center double crochets of the round below we're gonna skip those so that would be let's see how many we have actually that we're working into we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then we skip so it's two extra just like from each row before so we have those two, we're going to skip over those and do our single crochet in the next one. So it creates a smaller hole, but still has the hole. Now we're going to do our hanging loop at this point. So if you don't want the hanging loop, just do the three single crochets in the corner. Otherwise, we're going to work this next point into that hanging loop. So what you're going to do for your hanging loop, you're going to do your first single crochet into your point, and you're going to do your second single crochet. Now you're going to stop before your third, and you're going to chain 16 nice and tight. That way they're not all loopy. Just keep them right on the shaft of your hook so that they're all the same size. And we're going to do 16 total. Keep going. I wasn't counting. Let me count mine real quick. Three more. One, two, and three. Then, to finish off my hanging loop, I'm going to go back into the first chain I made. And I'm going to slip stitch it. So I'm going to catch the back loop and the bottom bump. So I don't create a huge hole. And slip stitch that nice and tight. I'll even tighten it down a little. And then I'm going to do that last single crochet in my chain. So now I have my hanging loop coming out of the middle of the point and it's all ready to go. And then I'm going to keep single crocheting all the way around. You can make your loop bigger or smaller depending on what size you like it. So if you want you can do more chains or less chains. But 16 seems to be a good number for plastic hooks for showers. So keep on single crocheting and skipping those two middle stitches and we'll meet near the end of round seven to finish off and weave in our loose ends. Okay, I'm right at my last single crochet. And remember we slip stitched and created our first single crochet over here so we can skip those two middle stitches. So I'm going to join my round in the first single crochet, not the chain one. Just go straight into your first single crochet and join it with a slip stitch. And then to fasten off, I like to do, instead of pulling the loop out and cutting it and pulling it through, I just make a chain and pull that nice and long, long enough to weave in my ends. And cut that off. Then I just pull out the extra loop. Okay, our last step 
before we are ready to use this washcloth is to weave in our ends. And I like to do a video, or I like to put it in the video, just for people that may not, um, may have not seen people weave in ends before. So at my fasten off, sometimes it may stick up a little. What you can do is just go into your very next stitch and push your hook through, or sorry, your needle through, and pull that down. And it kind of blends in and hides it. Since this is a washcloth and you're most likely going to use both sides of it, or you'll see both sides all the time, you want to get your stitches or your needle between your stitches so that you don't have a wrong or right side to your project. There's lots of gaps between these stitches. So you want to make sure that you're staying within the dense parts when you're sewing. So don't go straight across these big open spaces and create a big line. And as you weave in, pull back and forth. So you want to go kind of um, diagonally. You can split your yarn, that's fine, it doesn't matter. But pull in different areas as you go so that way it will lay slack and not really tight to where it's going to bounce back and then poke out from your um, work. So go one way and then go the other way. And you're just going to do that for both of your ends until they are sufficiently weaved in, depending on how much you want to do. I like to do enough to where if it does stick out, I don't worry about having to cut that little piece that's sticking out when I'm using it. So you're just going to do both ends and then we'll come back and check out our finished project. Alright, I finished weaving in my ends and my washcloth is now all complete and ready for use. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them below. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching.